Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In this tutorial, we are going to make the calculator actually calculate and be useful. In the previous part, which you should definitely check out, we made the UI. Now we are gonna be coding the logic in C Sharp. If you wanna get the most out of this tutorial, you should definitely know something about C Sharp, so check out my tutorial series Learn C Sharp if you'd rather brush up on that. So, without further ado, let's open up main activity which is located right here. This is the class which makes stuff happen. If you'd like to know the basics of Android development, check out my tutorial about making a simple Android app in Xamarin Android. So first up, in the previous tutorial we made a calculator text view. If we go into the main.axml, this is the text view which I am talking about. This will hold the current calculation and also the result when we click on equals. And we need to keep track of it inside this main activity. So we are gonna create a private field of type text view and we are gonna call it calculator text. This will be a simple calculator. This means that there will be only two numbers at maximum displayed at one time. We want to create a private string array, it will be called numbers, and we won't just declare it, we will initialize it and it will be equal to new string with the length of 2. You will see why we keep track of numbers as strings in a little while. We also want to keep track of an operator which is currently displayed, so again private string operator, but whoops, it turns out that operator is a keyword. We still want this to be named operator though. We can accomplish this by putting an add sign before this operator. Alright, now inside this onCreate method, which runs only once when the activity is created, we want to set the calculator text field, which is located here, to be equal to the calculator text view, which is in our main.axml. So calculator text will be equal to find view by ID, the type of the view will be text view, and the ID is resource dot id dot calculator text view and do remember that in the previous part we made our buttons to call a method called button click well we are gonna create it right now if we go into styles.xml this is the line in which we specify the name of the method which is gonna be called so we are gonna add this method over here it's gonna be public void button click and it's gonna take in one argument of type view we currently don't have the proper namespace added, so we just want to press control and dot and using android.views. And this view will be called simply v. But doing just this is not enough. Because we are writing this in Xamarin in C Sharp, we need to do a little bit of setup. We need to add an attribute to this method. So square bracket, and we want to write java.interop.export. And here we want to put the name of the method, which is button click. But now when we go to build and build solution, we are gonna get an error. We need to add a reference to mono.android.export.dll when we use export attribute or export field attribute. And here we are surely using export attribute. So we need to add that reference. To add it, we wanna right click on references, add reference, and here we can see android.export. We wanna tick this and click OK. Now when we again go to build and build solution, we aren't gonna get any errors, which is definitely awesome. Now inside this method, we wanna operate with the text inside the button. And the button is passed into this method as a view. But currently, we cannot operate with the text, because when we write v.text, there is nothing like that. For this to be possible, we need to cast this view v to be a button. So we are gonna create a button, it will be called button, and it will be equal to button v. This is called casting. And now if a string of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and dot contains button.text. So basically when the button is for adding a number or a decimal point, we want to add a number or decimal point. And we want to pass button.text inside this method. But currently there is no such method. We can simply create it by pressing on control dot. And now when we press enter, it is gonna generate a method for us. The method is right down here. Also else if divide times plus or minus, and I will leave these strange characters in the video description. And if this string contains button dot text, 
we want to call a method called add operator and again pass button dot text to it and we again want to generate it and again else if equals is equal to button dot text we want to calculate and again let's generate this method and now there is only one button left which we haven't assigned any method to because of this we can put here just an else clause and we want to call erase and again let's generate the method for us first up let's do something with this method called add number or decimal point but before we do that let's change the string text parameter to say string value in all of these methods so value in add number or decimal point and also this will be called value inside this add operator method all right now we can delete this throw new not implemented exception and just now I have realized that we should probably rename this method to say add digit or decimal point. This will be more correct. So let's change the number to digit and let's again press on control dot and enter which is gonna rename any call to this method to be correct. Alright now that we have that we should decide which particular number we should add this digit or decimal point to. We have two numbers inside an array. So we need to create an integer index and we will use a ternary operator if add operator is equal to null so if there is currently just no operator it makes sense to work with the first number so if operator is null we want the index to be equal to zero which is the first number otherwise if the operator is not null we want to work with the second number so the index is one and if value which is the string passed into this method and remember that this value is just what is written on the button and if this value is equal to decimal point so dot and the currently worked with number already contains a decimal point so if numbers at index dot contains a dot or a decimal point we don't want to do anything inside this method we surely don't want to have two decimal points inside one number that is just plain stupid so because of this we want to return from this method which is going to stop its execution so return otherwise numbers at index will be plus equal to value which is going to concatenate this value to this particular number and now it's a good time to show the change inside our calculator text view this will ensure that our user will be actually able to see his actions so we want to call a method called update calculator text and again we are going to generate it and now let's go to that method we can either find it or click on this call to that method and press on f12 we want to delete this throw new not implemented exception and here we just want to assign calculator text dot text to be equal to an interpolated string so let's put a dollar sign before this string and it's gonna display numbers at index zero then a space then we want to display an operator then yet another space and numbers at index of one all right but this method is just one simple expression let's make this method an expression bodied method we are going to copy the contents of it delete the two curly braces alongside with the content and put an equals and greater sign and paste the contents in here nice now let's do something with the add operator method first we want to check if we already have something in the second number so if numbers at the index of one which is the second number doesn't equal null which means that there is already something inside it we will want to calculate and put an operator which we are currently adding to the calculation inside the calculation but only after the result of the calculation so basically if we had something like five plus three and we wanted to put a minus we would first determine that five plus three is eight and only after that we would put a minus over there so after such call to add operator we would have eight minus and then nothing inside the text view and i really hope that this makes sense so we want to call calculate but we want to tell the calculate method which operator it should add after calculating so we are going to pass in one argument value but there is no such argument inside calculate so let's add it it will be of type string and we will call it new operator and now we have a problem we are also calling this calculate method from another place right over here but here we don't want to add any operator after the calculation so again if there was 5 plus 3 inside the calculator text view 
after pressing the equals button, we just want to have 8 inside the text view and no other operators or any such things. The simplest way to accomplish what we want is to make this operator optional. This can be done by assigning a default value to it. For our new operator, it will be null. And now we don't have any errors and everything is cool. Now let's go back to the add operator method and after the call to calculate, we just want to return from this add operator method. And if the numbers at the index of 1, so the second number is null, so when there is nothing inside it, we just want to set our operator to be equal to value and we also want to update calculator text. Now let's change the calculate method. So we want to keep track of result and it's going to be a double, but we want this to be equal to null. We need to do this for various reasons and you will know why in just a little while. But value types cannot be assigned null. To be able to accomplish this, we need to make this double not just a regular double, but a nullable double. We can do this by putting a question mark after it. Also, we want to create a nullable double first. And this is going to be equal to if the first number is null. So if the number at the index of zero is null, we want this variable first to be also null. Otherwise, it will be equal to double dot parse. And this method makes a double out of a string and we want to parse numbers zero. But we have an error and we can fix this pretty simply by just casting this double into a nullable double. And now we are all good. Now we want to copy this line, paste it down here and change first to second. And we want to change the indices. So one and also here it will be one. And now we want to set the result based on the current operator. So switch at operator. And if the operator is divide, so case divide, then we want to set the result to be equal to first divided by second. And now another case, and this time it's going to be multiplication. We want to set the result to be equal to first multiplied by second and also break. And whoops, I have forgotten a column here. Now case plus, the result will be first plus second and case minus, result will be equal to first minus second. And now if result doesn't equal null, if none of the operands is null, this means that neither first nor second is null, the result won't be null as well. However, if just one operand is null, so if either first or second is null, the result will be null too. So if we have some kind of meaningful result, which is not null, we want to set the first number to display the result. So numbers at index of zero, is equal to result dot to string. The operator will be equal to new operator. And because this parameter is optional and we have already set it to null, if we don't pass any argument to this method, this new operator will be null by default. So at operator will be assigned null by default. Also, the second number should be null. And we also want to update calculator text. All right, and now for the last method, erase. Here we want to set both of the numbers to be equal to null. So number zero equals numbers one and that equals null. Also the operator will be null and we want to update calculator text. All right. And now when we run this inside our emulator, it should work perfectly fine. If you would like to see quite a bit more advanced, simple scientific calculator, please check out OneCalc. It's a calculator made with you in mind. OneCalc has many material themes you can choose from and it's ready to help you with all of your calculation needs. You can get it from the link in the video description. Now let's calculate simple 5 plus 3 and equals 8 minus 5 equals 3 divided by 9 equals 1 third and times 3 equals not one, but we can live with this. Now let's try and put multiple decimal points inside one number. So 12 decimal point and decimal point, decimal point, decimal point, nothing happens and 12.5. And now let's try and put decimal point over here and nothing happens again. Now times two should be 25, but this time we aren't going to click equals, but we are going to click plus. And as you can see, we have 25 plus. So this feature works as well. And we want to add five to this. And now let's click on divide 
So 30 divided by 5 equals 6. Alright, it completely works. And now let's press on delete. And we can write again. And even when we have everything filled in, so 6 times 2. And now when we press on delete, it's gonna just work nicely. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. If you'd like to get the code written in this tutorial, check out the link in the video description, which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button to be notified about all of my new videos. If this video helped you and you also learned something new, please give it a like and also share it. Leave a comment if you have anything to say, whether it's a suggestion, question or if you just wanna say hi. Follow me on social media and see you in the next video.